So what are the protective mechanisms? So we know that at childbirth or at uh, when the baby is born, both the superficial and the deep inguinal ring are one above the other. So the structure can easily come out like this. But as age progresses, okay, the deep ring will remain where it is, but the superficial ring will migrate and it becomes an oblique canal. Okay, so for some, for uh, a structure which is, if it is one above the uh, one above the other, you have easy access out. But when it is a diagonal, the structure has to come out like this, like this, and like this. So it's a lot more oblique and a lot more tedious. So this acts as a protective mechanism. All right, for any structure to come out in this shape, it's going to be difficult for it. That is one. Now. Uh, we use this concept somewhere else. Like for example, if this is a skin and there is fluid here, ascites. Okay. When we do an ascitic tap, we don't put our needle straight through this. What will happen? When you put the needle, you will get fluid. But after you take out the needle, the fluid can, the fluid which is here can ooze out of this and cause leakage from the skin. That's why we use what we call as a Z-track technique. Okay. Where you put a needle here, you go in make a flap into the skin and then enter the body. We call this as a Z-track technique. So now what happens? After you have finished aspirating and you remove your needle, this fluid will put pressure here and this only will close this area. Okay, so it will act like a flap and that itself will close the area. Now that is exactly the similar concept what is happening in an oblique canal. The increased intra-abdominal pressure will cause compression of this oblique canal and will not allow any content or structure to pass through it. Next is your shutter mechanism. Now, we just read that you're going to have the conjoint tendon, the external oblique aponeurosis and this is how the uh, anatomy of the inguinal canal is. Now, when this conjoint tendon contracts, when it contracts, this is and the inguinal ligament get opposed to each other. It's like pulling down a shutter for a shop. Okay, so when it contracts, it pulls it down so the entire area will collapse and it acts like a shutter. All right. So this is a shutter mechanism. Next is the sphincter mechanism. For the sphincter mechanism, we know that the external oblique fibers are placed like this. And the opening in the external oblique is a triangle. So whenever the external oblique contracts, this opening will become narrow. Okay, it lack like a sphincter. What is wide will just close up like this and prevent any content from trying to come out. So that is another protective mechanism which is going to prevent the formation of a hernia. And the last one is the ball valve mechanism. So if this is the deep ring, this is the inguinal canal. We know that inside are the cord structures. At the same time, we also know that these cord structures are covered by the cremastric fascia or the cremastric muscle. So when there is a, a risk or a potential like for example cough, when there is raised intra-abdominal pressure, this cremastric muscle contracts. So what happens at that point of time? This is your content of the inguinal canal. When this contracts, this entire thing will pull back itself towards the deep inguinal ring and lack like a big ball which is blocking the deep inguinal ring and doesn't allow anything to go out. So this is what we call as a ball wall mechanism. 